What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. All right, well, in one of our other YouTube videos, we did a non-Superflex rookie mock, um, and we said, you know, we wanted to spend a little bit more time on Taylor versus Clyde Edwards-Alaire at the 1-1, one, one, kind of 1-2. We were moving quickly for purposes in that video of trying to cover a lot of ground, and we wanted to do a, a little follow-up video of Clyde Edwards uh, versus Taylor and why we were taking Taylor as the top guy um, overall in non-Superflex. Yeah, so I got Taylor at 1-1, one, one, right? You got Taylor at 1-1, one, one, right? All, all day. All day. Er day. All day. Er jam day. <laughs> Shout out been, to New Girl. I have been rerunning through some New Girl. You got to get past the first couple episodes, but once you're all in and the, the, the banter between everyone really starts to ramp up and the chemistry is really solid if you're, if you're looking for something to watch in these times with, with a decent amount of episodes, it, it's got some pretty good stuff. Obviously, it's definitely it's pretty funny it tails off towards the end of that show in my opinion but the beginning seasons it has its ups and downs just like i mean it's, it's like seven seasons so yeah yeah but it's, all right it's, it's good sitcom anyway yeah back to taylor and clyde edwards alaire somebody yeah, definitely I mean, just tuned out already yeah <laughs> hey new girl thumbs Fucking down <laughs> zoe de chanel she's not pretty at all <laughs> All right, Clyde, JT, like both these guys ended up in great situations. They both have awesome skill sets that fit exactly what the teams who drafted them want to do. Both players we really like, but, you know, let's get into what actually separates Jonathan Taylor from Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Well, I think I need to go ahead and get a little fresh crack to kick off the love fest for Taylor. Now, it's not to say – obviously – Clyde Edwards is is the one two in our opinion and the one one in a lot of other people's opinions. So, you know, they're both good players. Um, and if I'm playing redraft, you know, I'm we're we're talking dynasty here. Probably taking Clyde Edwards first. He has more year one upside, most likely quicker. Um, but again, we're playing dynasty, and when I can get a player with all the tools that Taylor has, I can't turn that down. He's a cornerstone type of player for your dynasty roster, in my opinion. Um, He's 5'10", 226. Solid. <laughs> Ran a 439. Strong. You don't say. Two-time Doak Walker Award winner, which is basically the best running back in the nation. He's had 2,000 yards rushing and times it's a two. And it's a travesty that he didn't have three 2,000-yard rushing seasons. Give him, my man, 23 more yards. Come yeah. on, Badgers. He had 19, 1,977 his freshman year. Um, so I think that's a decent breakout age. I know it probably doesn't matter. It doesn't that matter for running, for running backs, but, but uh, market share though. Market <laughs> yeah. share is outrageous. Um, so to go along with all those things, this guy faced, he had 2000 yards multiple times. This guy faced an eight man box 29% of the time. That's most out of any of the top backs in this class outside of AJ Dillon, who was at 46, which is a number all on its own, which is ridiculous. Um, but many don't consider him to be a top back in this class, which is fine. People want to talk about the odometer. Yeah, he had a lot of yards and he did all this, but he had 926 carries. Not worried about the odometer. He took right. all those in stride, crushed it, never really injured. And if if that's the case, if you can handle all that wear and tear, I'm fine with it. Like, I'm ready to go and move on to the next. Like, there's been plenty of backs. We, we listened, when he talked to Matt Waldman about this, who gets a lot more in-depth in these things, he said that it's a joke and you shouldn't worry about those things if a guy stays healthy. Yep, exactly. Yeah, we had that conversation when we had Matt on the show about A.J. Dillon. And it's like, you know, if, if these guys didn't have these workhorse numbers, then you'd be like, oh, well, but can he handle the full load, you know? Right, right. So that that is for sure. He can handle it. He can handle it with a bunch of dudes in the box and still crush. He's an elite prospect at the running back position. And this is the position that I want to hammer in rookie drafts. If you've been fucking with us for a while, we've been – Always telling you, hammer running backs in the rookie draft, hammer running backs in the rookie draft, hammer running backs in the rookie draft. Also, we like to hammer running backs in a startup. It's just when the value the value flips so fast and the running back becomes so valuable so quick um, that it just it just makes sense to hammer those positions. And, and I like to have a deep running back core. In most instances, that's the way I've won championships. 
Um, not to say you can't. There's a ton of ways to skin a cat here and, and win. This is my, our particular favorite. And in rookie drafts, though, I don't think there's any argument to taking running backs early. Um, and really, Jonathan Taylor fits that model to a T. Like, that's that's what I want out of my guy. That's what I want out of – I have lucky enough to have the 1-1. One, one. That's, the, that, that's what I want to do. Absolutely. Uh, Jonathan Taylor is like a Dr. Dre jam, man. His shit is explosive. Like, for real, he was busting off long-ass runs. He runs powerful. Like, we'll run some tape here. He, he, he gets skinny, but he can also slip, you know, slip through plenty of tackles. Along with running with power, he can make something from nothing. He has all the moves you could want, and he can string them all together. And, and right. just, he's, just got, he's just a complete package, and then people want to knock him for the passing, but I, I don't think that that's a knock at all. Right. And when I first started evaluating him, I, I told y'all boys that I thought he was, he looked like a Zeke Elliott with a little bit more wiggle. And if you go over to Matt Kelly's player profiler and type it in, his comp is Ezekiel Elliott. So that's weird. Um, so there is two issues for me with, with Jonathan Taylor here, ball security and pass pro. In my opinion, both are very fixable. This is a dude who wants to be a like astrophysicist when he's done and go back to school. Plans he's to go to Harvard. Smart. He absolutely crushes academics. He's a really smart guy. I think this is, and to me, that tells you that he can work hard and learn. And we've seen plenty of people fix fumbling problems. And pass pro to me is an effort and technique. And at the next level, when he has somebody pounding those things into him and saying, "This is how we're doing it. This is what we're doing," I don't think it's a problem. Now, obviously, there are fumbles. As well, he had nine fumbles his first year, and then um, he had nine through the next two seasons, um, which so he cleaned it up a little bit. Also, um, gotta gotta clean that up. But again, I think it's think that's very fixable. Right, um, plenty of examples of guys who've been able to clean up fumbling. Right. No, I do not put pass catching in the uh, list of issues here. He caught more balls than DeAndre Swift last year. Um, Boom. You know, that's what he gets praised for. And I'm not saying he's the same type of player when he catches the ball or the same type of receiver that he is. But in volume wise, he caught more uh, balls than DeAndre Swift. They obviously yeah, he, came in this year. Go ahead. Sorry. He, he's not, you know, running like the same type of routes as, as Swift is. But I mean, he's catching great balls out of the backfield. He's 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 catching balls in stride on his back hip and then look out when he gets the ball in space. Like he's and he's right. putting hands on the ball. He's catching it outside of his frame. All I need is a couple two or three catches a game from a workhorse back and and it's it's money in the bank. So right. he doesn't you have to be this that, crazy he ridiculous can. He doesn't have to be as crazy ridiculous pass catcher like Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Like that's probably the only thing that separates that that, that Clyde has on Jonathan Taylor is is the route running and the pass catching ability, but I don't, I don't think it's that like he's, he's better, but that's like it. That's the only thing that Clyde, right. in my opinion, is better than Jonathan Taylor. At. Yeah. So at, last year at Wisconsin, they talked about it and they added more pass plays to the running back for Taylor. And he answered the call um, in 2020 season. Jonathan Taylor had more targets per route run at 33% than Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, Kenyon Drake, Marlon Mack, uh, Kareem Hunt, Joe Mixon, Saquon Barkley, you know, a lot of good guys in there. And now that's not really that, – all that's saying is that they target him a lot. So they put, they put in these things and manufactured him touches. And he answered the bell there. He caught passes. He caught plenty of passes. Well, coming out of – we'll use the same back that came out of Wisconsin and Melvin Gordon. Nobody thought he was a great pass catcher coming out. When he came out, he had 22 receptions for 228 yards and four touchdowns um, through 41 games in uh, – in college at Wisconsin Taylor in just his last year there had 26 catches, 252 yards and five touchdowns in 14 games. So nobody now thinks Melvin Gordon can't catch the ball. Like they just don't do it. And then this year at Wisconsin this year, they put in those things specifically to show you, Hey, this guy can catch the ball. He was ridiculous. We were going to, like you said, roll some tape here that you've probably already seen. He can make the catches and he can do stuff after it. Like, it's 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 a non-issue to me. Like it's a way overblown in general, in my opinion. People um, just and then jumped he gained, to that he gained more yards uh, per route run than any back in this class outside of Zach Moss with two point three yards. Um, so it's there. He can he can catch the ball. Like he's a very athletic guy. He's a smart guy. He's a hard worker. He went in and he learned how to 
play receiver a little better the off season before his his last his junior season here, and he came out and 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 showed it off. Absolutely, and it, it's just people just want to jump to that conclusion. They just want to see a big guy who didn't have a ton of catches on paper, and they want to be like, "Oh, he's not a good pass catcher." So that yeah. that's going to be no why way I he take. could catch it, right? And it's just we've been hounding this year after year, and it just it come, like look at Leonard Fournette. People were like, "He can't catch," and then he caught a ton of balls last year. Right. So get out of here. Right. He can catch. Can he catch? Did he, did he catch the balls that were thrown to him? Yes. More so than all the best players in the game, pretty much. Right. So that they, you know, all, all pass, pass catching backs are not created equally. I'm not saying, like you said, I'm not saying he's Clyde Edwards Alaire, but it's something in his skill set where he can make you pay if you throw it to him. He doesn't have to be elite. He just has to be decent, and he's decent at it. I think he's better than decent at it, actually. Um, and he's going to continue to work at it just like he did going into his senior year. Like, right. Or junior year, excuse me. Right. So let's get into the Colts a little bit here where he's at because, you know, we talk about Clyde Edwards-Alaire and and the landing spot and how good it was. Well, this is also a just paired up great landing spot for him. Now, we have Marlon Mack, which he's probably out after this year. Um, But you have a very similar scheme at Wisconsin as far as running uh, plays go. It's a lot of gap scheme mixed in there, which which Taylor accelerated at. Um, the Colts do a lot of that. And by the way, they have a really good offensive line. They traded up three spots to get this workhorse and put him on their squad. Um, the Colts were six in the NFL in yards before contact last year and finished up as a top three run backing unit in 2019, according to PFF. Right. Um, so that's. Yeah, I mean, ridiculous. you think you think about the Colts and you're like, man, they were bad. You know, they, they had Jacoby Brissett and it wasn't anything exciting, but. Like you said, sixth in, in yards before contact. They were seventh in total rushing yards and rushing yards per game. They were fifth in attempts. They were tenth in rushing TDs. And they were fifth in time of possession. So they were right. doing well what they were wanting to do. And right. it just fits perfectly with what Jonathan Taylor can do. And, and you and could you, you, you can't put a little bit of that on the attempts and all that stuff on, hey, we lost Andrew Luck at the beginning of the season and Brissett was in here, but you know, they you had have success Phil doing it. Right. They had plenty of success doing it. And now you had Phil Rives, who, you know, some may not see as a huge upgrade, but he's a veteran guy who can keep these game scripts in a neutral position, which means more attempts and more uh, shots at, at um, opportunity for, for Taylor. And you have Phil Rives, who also is familiar with Frank Wright. He's also familiar with Nick Serini. Uh, who's the offensive coordinator. They were together in San Diego, which is now L.A., so there's familiarity there, and they they can come right in and be a little bit more cohesive than a normal free agent transitioning from one spot to another. And and people want to talk about how bad Phil Rivers was in 2019. Well, as bad as it was, it was still better than Jacoby Brissett. He had a higher completion percentage. He had more yards, more touchdowns, and despite way more interceptions, he had a way higher quarterback rating. So – Maybe not way higher, but he had a higher quarterback rating if that's what you're into. And so right. their offense is going to get better. You know, they're going to be able to, to do m- more of what they want to do, which is run the damn ball. And then you right. mentioned how, you know, Jonathan Taylor at Wisconsin, it played into to come into the Colts in the gap scheme. Pro Football Focus had a, a stat where he was just crushing running behind the left guard. And now he's coming in to run behind Decent Quentin left Nelson. Guard in, in Indy, yeah. Right. Now him and Quentin are just going to do work from here on out. Right. All right, well, to wrap this up, the Colts definitely have been using a running back by committee approach, which I think inevitably Taylor will come in and be the every down workhorse for this run hungry team. Um, I think that's that's inevitable. Like I said, Marlon Max after this out after this year, most likely, unless he's going to come back on a super cheap deal, which I don't believe he will. Like, I think they brought in Taylor to do everything they need to do with mostly one guy with obvious spells. No, no running back in the league right now doesn't get spelled here and there a little bit. Um, so, you know, I don't, we've, we've talked about this as well in the past. Like, I don't think that m- really any rookie, maybe outside of Clyde Edwards Alaire who can come in and catch passes is going to come in and accelerate right, right away because of this weird off season. Like it's already tough for a rookie to come in and contribute right away. So now you have this off season where they're, you know, not getting as much hands-on experience as they possibly could not being around the team, not being all those things combined. And it could be a slow slot for a lot of rookies. We have another video talking about that. Um, right. Right. And, and you said that it's inevitable that Jonathan Taylor becomes a workhorse here, but right. inevitable doesn't mean right off the rip. Right. right. And, and then I said from here on out, I didn't necessarily mean that. I mean, 
ultimately. And so, yeah, he might start slow. And, yeah, the people who took Clyde Edwards-Hilaire at 1-1 or might be laughing at you six weeks into the season. You know, Big Coast right. said that in, in, the, in the start. Victory lapping. In the, in, the, in the rookie mock that we did, and they might they might be victory lapping because Clyde scored more points than Jonathan Taylor. But this is dynasty. We're playing dynasty here, guys. And, and, and Jonathan Taylor's a better dynasty prospect. That's what right. we're trying to say. He's a workhorse. He can handle the load. He'll – He's going to show you in his, you know, probably 12 to 15 attempts to start the season off glimpses of how great he's going to be. And then that's, you're not going to be able to keep this guy off the field for very long. Um, and I, he, he's, he can do everything you need him to do and, and easily tote the rock as many times as they need him to tote it. I'm taking Jonathan Taylor 1-1 one, one, all day. Or but day. let's talk a little Clyde Edwards because I know yeah. some people are, are – uh, in that camp, a lot of right. people are in that camp, which is weird because I didn't even know there was a Clyde Edwards camp like in the top five even before he got drafted to Kansas City. Everyone was like, ah, he's overrated. He's not that good. He's, he's slow. Right. He's this. He's that. It's like, well, All right. Some yeah, of the people- I had him, I had him pre, pre-draft above Swift below Dobbins. And I had Taylor at one in his own spot. And I still have Taylor at one in his own spot. And then I had Clyde Edwards and Dobbins in the next tier and then a break and then uh, Akers and, and Swift in the next tier. Um, yeah, I mean, we were definitely high on Clyde pre-NFL draft. And, like, a lot of the people who have him as the undisputed 1-1 were the same guys not having him in even their top five pre-NFL draft. And and then there are some guys that, that were high on him. And, and, and we had Angelo FF. We had him on the show. Um, we were going to have Jay Moyer and Brett Coleman on the show. Uh, didn't work out, but them boys are, are big on Clyde. But, but for the most part, that's like it. You know, we yeah. had Matt Wallman on and he had Clyde kind of low in his rankings, which Matt is kind of like us. We don't love rankings, but he, he's more about the tier. And, and then we, we kind of we got him admitting that, you know, if, if he got into a good spot, that Clyde could be, you know, more valuable than than some of the guys that were lower on his rankings. And we got him to c- kind of concede that. But like we were we were battling for Clyde Edwards Hilaire. So none of this video is to say that we don't like Clyde Edwards Hilaire. We love Clyde. Like, we've been on the Clyde train. Right. Just not at the 1-1. You know, just right. not at the 1-1. We got to can't take him over Taylor. Right. Can't do that. But but he does, man. He, he's great. He has all the tools. I'm going to roll some tape for you. He's got some. He's got great acceleration and burst. No, he didn't have the fastest 40-yard dash, but he had a 94-inch vert. Er, his vertical was in the 94th percentile. His broad jump was in the 81st percentile. So there's your burst. His 10-yard split was in the 93 percentile, and so he's got he's got acceleration, and that shows up on film. Right. He's, he's a great cutter. He can destroy any angle that you have on him, he, and he's a bit of a home run hitter in his own right. Like there's plenty of long ass runs. For Clyde right. Edwards Hilaire with LSU, despite well, the, speed, the 4 and, 6 40. Right. And there's going to be some more speed on the field in the NFL. And he doesn't have ridiculous top end speed, but it's good enough. Like right. he can get he can get a lead on you and at least hold you off for for you know a good And you chunk can argue yards. That, that some of those long runs were product of being in a ridiculous offense like sure, LSU. But, but guess what? Look, they're in the LSU of the pros with Kansas City. So he right. just fits in great with that. And then it's not just the fact that he can accelerate and burst and make cuts and moves. He he runs hard and he finishes with power, baby. Right. Drink. He's determined. Yeah. He's a determined runner. He runs hard. He he's got a ridiculous spin move. And oh, it's so, absolutely filthy. And when he when he finishes, like he finishes a lot of runs standing up and he's he's gonna tell you about it. Um right. You gotta get him there's off. a nastiness gotta, level with Clyde Edwards. He's very hard to tackle in a short you better booth, get him out of bounds. Say. Right. You better get him out of bounds, and it's it's hard to bring him down. And, and he got he got a god landing spot for his skill set, like, and that's what everybody likes about it. And I we I understand it, like I get it, like that's fantastic. Right, I get it, and I love this landing spot too, and I think he fits well there. I just don't know. Here's the one pause that I have with Clyde, especially when putting him up against Jonathan Taylor, is that I don't know if he can be an NFL workhorse. You know, he only had one season where he, he, he had over 200 carries. It was 215, which some people would be like, oh, well, it's, it's, uh, he's got high tread. You know, he's got, he's got good tread on the tires because he didn't handle the ball a lot in college. And I'm thinking, well, I didn't really see him prove that he could be a, a workhorse in college. He did yeah. catch 55 balls last year. So that, you know, and that, that goes into the landing spot of why people love him so much and, and how many catches you can look and say, hey, 55 catches, baby. That, that's, right. enough. that's enough. That's enough. But, you know, looking at what the Chiefs did back in 2017, granted that was with Alex Smith. Kareem Hunt came in as a rookie. He had 272 attempts and 53 receptions. 
Right. And he was bit, but but then when you take it to 18, he was on the, the same pace for the same amount of touches with Patrick Mahomes. So you can't tell me it was just the fact they had Alex Smith and they didn't open up the offense. Kareem Hunt was on pace for the same amount of touches both those years. Now his off field discretions got him out and he didn't get to total up those yards. But when he was in there, he was on pace, like I said. And so, you know, I just don't know if Clyde could come in and handle 300 touches. Like I love, I love him. I just don't know. And and he doesn't, he doesn't need to with the skill set and where he plays. Like sure. He can have have 225, 250 and be fine and and be really good. And he's going to be productive. And like I said, he got the best landing spot possible for his skill set. And I get it. Um, but we've also seen, you know, and I'm not saying that the, the, the chiefs offense is going anywhere in particular, but we've also, you know, Patrick Mahomes from one season to the next, there was a regression from 50 his first, touchdowns at 5,000 right. yards. And now he was a little injured in a sec, but that happens to, to players, especially like Patrick Mahomes, who are going to try to do a lot on their own. Um, and, you know, we've seen the Rams. They, they were great. Offense was untouchable. They go down. Eventually, Patrick Mahomes is going to get paid a lot of money. Something's going to have to give on that offense. So, you know, as good as it is, it could go downhill a little bit and maybe not quite fit Clyde's uh, skill set to a T. And I'm not – I'm not that, it's probably a bad example. I know people are going to get upset about that, but things happen. Things go up and down in, in the league. Like Patrick's not Jared Goff. Right. Well, and, and, you know, who knows? But like you said, it gets hard to build a team around somebody when you're paying them $40 million a year. Right. Um, and then he definitely didn't have the crazy second season that, that he that he had that first season. But, but I mean, listen, we like both these players. We just wanted to come out here and, and put our put our facts. And, and, you know, we do our due diligence, man. We watch a lot of the tape. We look at the stats. We research everything. We, we talk about it. We talk about it ad nauseum. And then we, we whittle it down. We figure it out. And we come out here and we give it to you. So not everyone's going to agree with our opinion. And that's fine. If you got it, if you disagree, hit us with a comment below. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. I, I Throw did, some did want to say real quick is okay. that I, I do, like I said a little while back, I do have Clyde Edwards and Dobbins in a tier outside of Taylor. Um, and I had Dobbins above Clyde Edwards uh, before the draft. Dobbins got a great landing spot too. Just might take a minute for it to really, really happen. I think he could have success this year, but Dobbins as a player and talent wise, I like more than Clyde Edwards Alaire. And I I don't think there's a very, I think it's a pretty thin line for me between Clyde Edwards and Dobbins. Like I'm fine. Like I want to get those, like we said in the video for the mock draft, I want to get one of those top three players. I really like Dobbins. I think he's a really good receiver in his own right. He's a game breaker in his own right. He landed in a great spot. Obviously Ingram's there for, I think two more years contractually. Um, but they have an out, out of it. They have an out after, after one year after if they year. want to. Um, and and Dobbins, Ingram's old, Dobbins, man. Ingram's 30 right. years old. So there's not even – who's to say his game keeps up? Now, I didn't see any signs of slowing down, and we really like Mark Ingram. But J.K. Right. Dobbins, a landing spot is great. In a year, J.K. Dobbins could be getting drafted ahead of Clyde Edwards-Hilaire because Clyde's not getting as much work as, as, as people expect him to get. And J.K. Dobbins, in my opinion, is a workhorse type of guy. Like, he, he's a guy that, that – that had 301 carries last year, and he had 230 carries a year before that. So he's he's proved he can handle the rock, and he's a great pass catcher, and, and he's got the elite speed. And so, and as long as Lamar Jackson stays healthy, that running that running game is going to be elite. So right. Anyway, I just want to throw him at the end. I know you were, yeah. If you want to throw some shade, throw some shade. I don't mind. Just maybe don't thumbs down it. That's kind of a right. jerk move. Right. Yeah. If you feel really- bad about it. Let's talk about it. Let's have it out for a second. Uh, but we really appreciate you guys, and uh, we'll be back with uh, some super flex mock, rookie mock here in a minute, and then we'll be on the regular mocks, and we got some NFL talk uh, to Not talk gonna about. Lie. So we're a little bit ready to be done with these rookies, but we'll keep coming. I, I was going to be done with the rookies, really. I wasn't even going to do a super flex mock, but people, we the last video went over really well, and people were asking about super flex, so we, we're going to get those quarterbacks in there and tell you where where you should take them, where the trade lines are at that point. Uh, so make sure you subscribe and check out the, uh, the Superflex Rookie Mock along with we're going to be doing startup mocks, regular and Superflex throughout the off season. Um, so a lot of good information in there. We really appreciate y'all and we'll catch you next time. Peace.